the primary of a transformer when connected to a DC battery of a 10 volt DC battery of 10 volt comma draws a current of 1 milliampere the number of turns of the primary and secondary windings are n1 n2 given number of turns in the primary you can take it as np number of turns in secondary as ns 50 and 100 respectively the voltage in the secondary and the current drawn you need to calculate vs and the current drawn by the circuit in the secondary are respectively you need to calculate vs and is uh, systematically so let me start it the choices are available before going for direct because it's i need to solve it and i'll come to know we know that transformer is a device which changes high input voltage to low input voltage or low input voltage to high input voltage hence transformer transfers or uh, something like it, it is going to support it for only alternating supplies you have connected dc battery of voltage 10 volt then you have an answer with you therefore the current in the secondary voltage and and the respective current is also zero so it means v s equal to zero i s equal to zero so i hope the question is very simple and it has a meaning in it the question is simple in an electrical circuit you have lcr circuit or lc we call and ac voltage source are all connected in series means it is a series connection a simple beautiful connection when l is removed from the circuit means now the circuit becomes rc circuit resistance and capacitance means that initially you have a lcr circuit when l is removed from the circuit comma the phase difference between the voltage and the current in the circuit is pi by 3 l is removed the phase difference between voltage and current becomes pi by 3 60 degrees if instead nothing the lcr was present l removed phase is this so instead of removing l you go for c you remove c then the circuit left with only rl circuit if instead c is removed from the circuit the phase difference is again pi by 3 the power factor of the circuit is we have the formula for power factor r by z and your z goes on changing let me address it mathematically you will appreciate it when l is removed the given data is taken care the voltage and the current there is a phase difference of pi by 3 and phase difference tan phi 1 you call when l is removed the phase difference is called pi by 3 that is called tan phi 1 equal to xc by r y means phase angle is given by tan phi equal to xc minus xl upon r when l is removed there is no xl xl is zero hence the phase angle becomes xc by r and your tan of 60 degree equal to xc by r mathematically it simplifies to xc is equal to root 3 r so i hope you can easily connect yourself the phase angle is pi by 3 tan pi by 3 equal to xc minus xl upon r xl equal to 0 because l is not present because xl is given by omega l hence xc we calculate xc comes out to be root 3 r now the next part when c is removed the phase difference again pi by 3 phi 2 equal to pi by 3 again tan pi it becomes xl by r again we get root 3 r now look at the xc and xr the more interesting parameter xc equal to root 3 xl equal to root 3 so it means the opposition offered by capacitor opposition offered by inductor are one and the same or i can say capacitor reactance inductor reactance are one and the same hence the power factor is given by you have a simple formula r by z so when both are one and the same your z reduces to simple r i hope this state of a circuit is called a resonance circuit what is resonance a condition the condition in which <coughs> where the oppositions offered by capacitor the oppositions offered by inductor both become equal that is root 3 r when that is a situation the circuit means their reactances that is xl and xc will nullify each other oppositions because they are out of phase they are equal in magnitude but their phase phase angle is 180 degree xl and xc are 180 degree apart 
when the phase angle between xr and xc are apart so i can say they are equal and opposite hence their value is going to be zero hence impedance becomes simply r pure cos factor power factor is nothing but cos factor power factor do remember cos power factor is given by cos phi equal to r upon z so r upon z becomes simply r by z equal to r by r which is nothing but 1 cos phi equal to 1 means phi equal to a simple value a 0 degree again a small diagram of course this concept comes in both emi as well as alternating current the current i is plotted as a function of time period where in an inductance inductance means you have an inductor it has a property inductance the current in the inductance is varying with time according to a plot which one of the following is the correct variation of voltage with time in the coil so when your current is varying with respect to time do remember you have a formula emf is given by l di by dt when your current is varying you need to remember a formulas play a very key role we know that inductor is a device which stores energy now what happens when current is changing with respect to time di by dt i had a simple formula emf is given by l times di by dt so that plot is going to help you out look at there are two parts at this t small t uh, it starts with a zero it is half of the time period t by 2 and this is the total time period t so I have two regions. This is the first region where the current is continuously increasing with a constant slope. The rate of change of current is a constant here. And of course it is increasing and it is decreasing here. We have a formula EMF equal to minus L di by dt. You need to address it. Now, which one of the following is a correct? I cannot go with this because in zero to T by two, the voltage, I, I need to plot a graph of, remember EMF equal to minus L di by dt. L is a constant di by dt it is gradually increasing so hence i need to think of this relation is also your voltage and current will not be the same behavior and this cannot be a sinusoidal function a b c cannot be accepted only the d is going to mathematically will cross check you have formula v equal to minus l di by dt since Voltage is directly proportional to slope of IT graph. Hence, so this minus sign, do remember this as I said in my, what I have plotted here is voltage versus time period. I have taken a positive amplitude of voltage, negative amplitude of voltage, minus indicates this, this EMF, of course the rate of change of it opposes the cost producing it. The change in a current is opposed by the induced EMF. Hence this minus sign symbolizes the conservation of energy. The instantaneous values of alternating current and voltages in a circuit are given as. Do remember, we know that when you have an alternating source connected to a circuit, your corresponding current is also an alternating parameter, it's called sinusoidal function. So your uh, applied source is an alternating behavior and your current is also alternating. That's why instant this E stands for instantaneous voltage and I stands for instantaneous current. This one upon two, this is one volt divided by root two. So it is called IM upon root 2. It is called IRMS. And you, you remember I equal to IM. Of course, we need to write E equal to EM, sine of omega t. Omega is equal to 2 pi. It, omega is nothing but 100 pi here. It is, again, 100 pi omega t plus kz. We write it. So pi by t is a phi angle, volt. Let me write it in this fashion. So current and voltage are in this relation. Now, average power in watts consumed in a circuit is what is the power average power we have a formula for average power do remember average power is given by average of a function so let me do it power equal to vrms irms yes let me do it mathematically let me go for the first one i equal to one upon root two of course i will get i equal to i naught standard form sine of omega t omega equal to 100 pi let me write it once again you have irms equal to i naught upon root two so I naught is nothing but your one upon root two. So you have a simple IRM is equal to one upon two ampere. Cross check, I naught equal to one upon root two. You have a here formula. Your IRM is given by naught upon root two. I naught means one upon root two. One upon root two into one upon root two becomes one by two ampere. 
So similarly, I got IRMS. Now we go for VRMS. So phase angle is given extra. ERMS equal to one upon two volt. The current and voltage RMS values are half volt, half ampere. At the same time, your phase angle is pi by three. This is an additional phase angle in case applied voltage. Now I want average power. Do remember average power is given by final power is given by IRMS, VRMS. It's a whole relation. IRMS, VRMS and the cos phi. Cos phi is your, of course, the phase angle between voltage and the current. Here the voltage and the current phase angle is given by instead of in terms of R by Z, we are given in terms of the phase angle pi by three. Cos six degree, all our family is one by two. One by two, one by two, one by two, it becomes one by two cube, nothing but one by eight. The answer is very simple. Of course, we got it. It is going to be uh, the RMS value of a potential difference we shown in the figure is of course, you have a beautiful question, RMS value of a potential difference. VRMS is given by, I hope all are familiar, the answer is V0 upon root 2. But how to get this V0 upon root 2 is a mathematical function. You have an input voltage at time equal to time period equal to 0. It is a maximum. At T half, it becomes exactly 0. Then again, it's of course, it's not a sinusoidal function. It's a square function. Let me address it mathematically. Again, the same graph is plotted here, replotted, and I have defined into two intervals, 0 to t by 2 and t by 2t. Means your, this whole graph says that your voltage is not a sinusoidal function, it's a square wave function, it's called square wave, it's called a step function. So it is at time period 0, the maximum voltage is V0, it is not a sinusoidal function, it is a square function we call, it remains constant, amplitude, once it reaches time period t by 2, suddenly it becomes a 0. That's why uh, it is v equal to v0. It is called v0, this value, for 0, time period 0, and t by 2. Up to here, from 0 to t by 2, this value is going to be constant. I hope it's visible on the screen. This is v0. So my v becomes this v. This is a v value. It has two regions. One is 0 to t by 2, another is t by 2 to time period, total time period. So another is with voltage is zero because this part of the curve, this part of the graph square curve gives you voltage zero. What is the interval? The interval is half time period to the total time period t by two to t because small t is a variable. But the question is, what is the RMS value? RMS value is VRMS equal to, of course, our uh, sinusoidal function is V zero by root two. We'll cross check here also. So RMS value is given by first square the value, instant value, first square it then take an average, then take a root RMS. Let me do the mathematical part. It's a little bit bigger one, looks like this. Average of a function is given by, I hope you remember, we have one upon time period integration over zero to t, the function and dt. So what we have did first, this is my v equal to v0. There are two regions, first region. So this is called the whole, this whole from here, zero to t is divided into two regions, first region, second region, zero to t by two, here 0 to t I have written, 0 to t is divided into 0 to t by 2, t by 2 to t. I hope the integration you are good, you are very strong. There's no need to go in detail. In the denominator, we have written 0 to total time period dt. This integration gives you simple t, capital T. Capital T means capital T minus 0, it becomes time period, total time period. The same equation is written in this form. This 1 upon t integration, there are two integration limits, 0 to t by 2 and t by 2 t. And next simplification gives you uh, look at this relation. This is V0 in this region, 0 to t by 2. 0 to t by 2 is V0 square and it is 0 volt. Voltage is 0 for time period t by 2 to t. So hence this integration gives you a very simple value, 0. So only this integration gives me and it is a t, dt gives you t again V0. So it is V0 by t. This integration denominator gives me t. It is this, this is a constant value. I will take it out of the integration V0 by t and the lower limit, upper limit, you can have t by 2, this t by 2, again square. And what exactly I got it? I got it, this is RMS value. First, I took a square of the first function, this is squared. Then I go for average, average means this integration. Then finally root, all the three are put in this formula. This formula tells you, first take the V, this V, it has two regions, first region V0, second region V0. This V is first, I will square it, like S means square it, then take a average, average means integration. Yes, then finally root. So all the three are written. You simplify this, this first step. So when you simplify, you'll end up with this whole relationship. Now last step, I will do it in this fashion. 
this RMS is written RMS, which is equal to, you have a square, square celebrates, and you have two, two is kept in under root two. And that question, uh, of course, I have clubbed all the questions from one, your Karnataka, JWE, something like the physics remains same. Yes, come back. A coil has a resistance 30 ohm, and inductive reactance 20 ohm. You have a resistor with 30 ohm resistance and you have an inductor with inductance 20 ohm at 50 hertz frequency. This is called RL circuit. If an AC source of 200 volt, that is RMS value and VRMS value 100 hertz is connected, connected across the coil, the current in the coil will be. If an AC source 200 volt, 100 hertz is connected across the coil, the current in the coil will be. Yes, let me calculate. So this formula it is 20 ohm at 50 hertz frequency inductive reactance they have given. Yes, let me go to the analysis. We need finally what is the current in the coil will be. So resistance is 30 ohm. Your inductive reactance is 20 ohm at 50 hertz. Let me do the mathematics. You will appreciate XL is given by omega L. Omega L is 2 pi frequency. So you have a two parameters. See, first I need to calculate what exactly is the values. There are two inductances values at 50 hertz and 100 hertz. Whether what will be the oppositions of an inductor at different frequencies because your inductance or inductive reactance that is opposition offered by inductor to the AC is depends on frequency it is omega L. So XL equal to 2 pi frequency L and XL dash equal to 2 pi frequency L again. So of course your inductance value, yes, inductance value I need to Check it out, inductance nullifies each other, left is frequency upon frequency dash. Now next, the formula of course will support you. Excel dash you want, what is the opposition at different. So your V dash upon V, V dash as we all know, it is the source frequency, it is 100 hertz upon the frequency given, that is 50 hertz, 150 is two, and Excel value is already 20, 20 into two becomes naturally a 40 ohm. What is this 40 ohm? This is the opposition of an inductor at 100 hertz. We calculate it first then I need a formula. Of course, you have an answer. Impedance is given by, of course, it is RL circuit, R square plus XL square. XL square is nothing but it is a modified inductance. Modified inductance is 40, 30 square plus 40 square. It is 900 plus 600 is 2500. Under root 2500 gives you 50. And finally, your current is I equal to, yes, RMS divided by Z. It is 200 divided by a very simple value. So it gives you four ampere current. The given circuit, the reading of voltmeter V1 and V2 are 300 volts each in the sense V1, V2, V3. It's a LCR circuit connected to AC source 220 volt, 50 hertz. It's an alternating uh, source whose uh, specifications are 220 RMS value of voltage frequency 50 hertz, I had a circuit ammeter, I need to calculate what is the current in the circuit. The reading of the voltmeter V3 and ammeter A are respectively. Finally, I need to calculate what is the ammeter, what is the current in the circuit, and what is the voltage across the register. Inductance value, they are not given, capacitance value, they are not given, but here V1 corresponds voltage across inductor, V2 corresponds voltage across capacitor. Both V1 and V2 are 300 volts each. And we have a concept, I hope you remember, when LCR circuit, when voltages across inductor and voltages across capacitors are one and the same, but the since the voltage is taken as a voltage phasor and current is taken as a current phasor, yes, in case of voltage phasors, VL phasor and VC phasor, the voltage across inductor and voltage across capacitor, they are 180 degree out of phase. When they are 180 degree out of phase, 180 degree out of phase, the voltage across inductor and voltage across capacitor, they nullify each other effect. Hence, the voltage across V3 equal to, you can get it by simplification method. Let me go to the mathematics. VL equal to VC equal to 300 volt. Therefore, the given series LCR circuit is in resonance. When it is in resonance, look at the formula, the reading of the voltmeter V3, we will have VR equal to V equal to 220. It means the net voltage 220 is given by V1 plus V2 plus V3. And since V1 equal to V2, they are going to nullify each other. Hence, the voltage across R, it is called V3, V3 is going to be VR, which is equal to 20 volt, whereas impedance equal to purely resistive, in the sense the opposition offered by L and the opposition offered by C, XL equal to XC, because your voltages are equal, voltages are taken as voltage phasors, their opposition is, they are equal and opposite in, in, in terms of angle, 
hence the the angle between voltage inductor and the voltage capacitor is 180 degree they nullify each other hence r equal to 100 ohms z equal to r finally the beautiful current in the circuit is given by same current which is going to by rms value divided by rms means 220 otherwise nothing but voltage across a resistor and it is v upon z which is nothing but 220 by 100 a simple mathematics gives you 2.2 The final answer comes out to be the choice number one, two, three, four. You can cross check. You'll get the answer very close to 2.2 ampere. Next one. <clears throat> yeah. A 220 volt input is supplied to a transformer. The output 220 volt input the output circuit draws a current of 2 ampere at a 440 volts. If the efficiency of transformer is 80%, the current drawn by the primary windings of the transformer is. What is the current in the primary? You have an input voltage 220. The output circuit draws a current. Output current is given and output voltage is given. Apply the efficiency formula. Let me do it very fast. The efficiency is mathematically beautifully given by, I hope you know, output power upon uh, output voltage upon input voltage and you have input voltage is 220 output voltage 440 mm -hmm. input current we need to calculate that's called the primary current output current is of course 2 ampere so there are three parameters even efficiency is also given 80 percent power efficiency is given by output power upon input power so when higher a relationship you go for a mathematics output power is given by out secondary voltage into secondary current divided by primary current into primary voltage so it is called power output divided by power input. Output power is nothing but secondary power. Input power is nothing but primary power. Voltage into current, secondary voltage, secondary current, secondary voltage, sorry, primary voltage, primary current. Now finally I need a current that is primary current, IP. Let me do the mathematics. Efficiency is 80%, put in the mathematics into work. Percentage can be written as 80 upon 100. So you have a secondary voltage 440, current is 2 ampere. Mathematics gives you IP equal to close to 5 ampere. 